it never really occurred to me. It caught me quite by surprise. Uh, can I have a few days to think about it? I'd like to discuss it with Polly first. Yes. Thank you. Goodbye. He's recommending me for the Van Boyd's Chair of the Humanities. Oh, hey. <laughs> uh, uh, of course it's not official. The Board of Trustees doesn't meet till next month. Oh, it's a rubber stamp. Everybody knows it. And he's doing this before he even appoints the new department chairman? That's the real exciting news. Now that Edith's gone, he wants me to step back in as the chairman. At least until the department gets back on even keel. And he wants me to pick my successor. I always knew he was such a fantastically intelligent man. Do you realize what this means? There are many promising students out there that I can really help now. We can bring back some of the classes that Edith got rid of. <laughs> I'm happy. I have to admit it. I'm a happy man. I don't have a care in the world. All right. Tomorrow, I won't have a care in the world. At two o'clock. He's very prompt. I don't think he was ever on time for class. Hello, Mrs. Lowenthal. Good afternoon, Professor Lowenthal. I sure hope you had a nice lunch. Melvin, uh, did you leave that motorbike of yours in front of the house? Yeah, I did. Do you think that was very smart? If this agreement of ours is to work, nobody should know you were here. Hey, I, I get what you mean. I'll move the bike to the side. It won't take a minute. You still don't have to do this. This is my problem. Henry Lowenthal, how dare you? You think I'm a, a back number? <laughs> All right, then. Bring it in. Ooh. <laughs> All set. I'm sure glad you thought of that, Professor. Melvin, sit down. Relax. We have a special treat for you, Melvin. Some clean herbal tea. An old recipe from my, from my grandmother. Hey, that's terrific. You too? You like always remember everything. I'm not anonymous with you. Um, aren't you having any? Oh, no. We're an encouragement of coffee drink. Can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, here's the friendship. Mmm. Mm. Nice and bitter. So, Melvin, <laughs> uh, you didn't tell anybody you were coming here this afternoon, did you? I sure didn't. I I wouldn't want to do anything to embarrass you, Professor. This really hits the spot. You seem quite content with yourself this afternoon. <laughs> Meaning that's a change for me? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I just had lunch with that girl I've been going with. You know, the one that's been causing me those emotional problems. And that's why I failed your final exam. We had this long talk about our relationship. We really communicated for the first time. So, you've solved your emotional problem. It was easy. I... I, I just told her that I had outgrown her. We didn't satisfy each other's needs anymore. The relationship had lost all its mellowness, so it was time to wrap it up. And so you just got rid of her, just like that. It was really an ethical solution, don't you think? How do you figure? Well, it's, it's just like you used to say in class. Moral <laughs> behavior often requires great courage. Well. I was sure scared to death about saying all that to Millicent. It took a lot of courage, believe me. Mm. It's uh, it's after two, uh, you know, uh, phone call time? I'll make the call. The college number is- I've been Catholic teaching for 35 years. I know what the college's phone number is. <clears throat> yes, registrar, please. 
Oh, hey, Harry. They got you answering your own phone now, do they? <laughs> uh, yes, I'm fine. How's Geraldine? Oh, she's good. Uh, yes, and Polly's fine, too. Listen, I'm wondering, have you received the grades of my beginning ethics course? Good. Listen, it was so late Friday night, I'm afraid I might have made a mistake on one of my students' grades. Yes, a boy named McMullen, Melvin McMullen. Oh, you got it right there, great. Uh, what did I give him? I, I failed him, didn't I? Oh, what a relief. I thought I had made a mistake. Hey, hey, just a That's damn minute. Right, Harry, uh, now. Uh, listen, I'm sorry to bother you. Uh, have a good afternoon. You, you, you gave me your word, your solemn promise. I told you I was going to call the registrar. I didn't tell you what I was going to tell you. Him. You, you lied to me. Mm. You betrayed me. Yep, that's right. I guess I did. How could you do this, such a thing? A man like you? Don't you know what I'm going to do now? Oh, I know what we're going to do. And that's why we have taken certain steps. What, what, what steps? I'm sorry, Melvin. I truly am. But it's not like you're gonna really be a big loss to anybody. Loss? Uh, loss? Uh, actually, your father might miss you a little bit, but my guess is that he really won't. Oh, you flipped. I'm, I'm getting out of here. Wait till my father finds out. He'll kill you. Uh, he won't be out for long. I, I didn't give him much. This and won't... our topsy would show faces. This won't take very long. Tight enough? Yep. You get his legs here. Um, don't forget to do both of them. Polly, I must admit, you are unquestionably the most capable, practical woman I have ever met. I better go talk to them. Somebody needs to keep Melvin company in here. Yes, that, that's a good idea. Just be a minute. Oh, he's out, I'm afraid. Visiting a professor of fellow colleagues. Oh, uh, when do you expect him back? Oh, it's hard to say. When those professors, philosophers, get together, just chatting away about Plato and Aristotle, they lose track of time. Mm -hmm. uh, why don't I call you when Kenya gets back? Well, be sure and call me. Maybe. You can tell me what I need to know, and then I won't have to bother your husband at all. Oh, I don't know very much about what goes on at the college. Well, it won't hurt for me to ask you. Uh, sit down, then. Would you care for a drink? Oh, no, thanks. Well, then, what seems to be the problem? Do you happen to know a kid named... Melvin McMullen? I don't think so. The Name doesn't sound very familiar. It's one of the professor students. It's, oh. He came in to see your husband last week. Anyway, that's what his girlfriend told us. McMillan. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. I didn't recognize the name at first. There's so many of these students constantly dropping in. Do you happen to know what he came to see your husband about? Oh, it came about. Mm -hmm. Oh, I believe he had uh, an objection to one of the grades he was getting in their course. Yeah, that's what this girl, this girl said too. Mm -hmm. 
Professor Lothal was going to flunk him, and his kids tried to argue him out of it. Oh, he didn't succeed. Henry told him in no uncertain terms that She told us that too. <clears throat> and he called, McMullen called her after he left there. Said he was mad as hell. Again, what is this about? Why would the police be interested in a, a student failing a class? Well, because the day he came to see your husband was the day Professor Wilshire got killed. Was it? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I think it might have been. And this is going to come as a shock to you. Mrs. Lothal, being as she was your husband's colleague. She? We're looking for the McMullen kid because we think he may know something about Professor Wilshire's murder. M murder? Mm hmm. Oh. Mrs. Lothal, you okay? Maybe you need some tea. Uh, no, that's cold. I have some fresh coffee in the kitchen. Oh, just black. Thanks. Oh, you young people nowadays, you have such despicably healthy habits. <laughs> Personally, I like loads of sugar in mine. So, what do you mean, murder? If sex was an accident. Oh, she was murdered, all right. We knew that from the start, of course. But we decided to keep it quiet for a while, let the killer think he was getting away with it. How did he know? Oh, he made plenty of mistakes. The corner, he saw right away that the fall from the cliff didn't kill her. But there was a cut on the back of her head that was in the wrong position. So somebody had hit her first and then threw her off the cliff. That was awfully stupid of the murderer, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. And we know that somebody was up at her cabin the same time she was. She found motorbike tracks out back. She doesn't own motorbikes, but that McMullen kid does. But don't a lot of people around here own motorbikes, Lieutenant? Yeah, sure. But there was a peculiar pattern to these tire marks. It's a fancy French brand. Not many of them in these parts. In fact, there's only one store in town that sells them. So you went to that, t that store and you found that Melvin had bought that brand of tire. It's amazing. I'm like Colombo. Just for tea. <clears throat> anyway, when we talked to this girl at Mullen's girlfriend, she told us that he called her after he, after he left her last Friday. Mm -hmm. Said he's going straight to the department chairman, chairwoman, Professor Wilshire, to get his grade change. And we think he rode up to that cabin. And killed Edith? The McMullen kid? Why would he kill her? Now, what we think is, when he got there and parked out back, it's just possible he saw the murderer running away, maybe. Oh, 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 oh dear, how clumsy of me. I, I had a clock in the kitchen. Oh. It's okay, I've got it. Oh, but your, your handkerchief is ruined. Leave it here and I'll wash it. Oh, no, you don't have to do that, believe me. So, you think Melvin might seen the killer? It's a possibility. But if he had seen anything, wouldn't he have said something on Friday? I mean, he really is the type of boy that likes to be center of attention. No. Very difficult to keep quiet, I should think. Yeah, but you never know with kids nowadays. No respect for the law. They got their pockets loaded with pot. They don't want to come near us. <clears throat> so, and the, but we'll find out as soon as we locate the kid. He told his girlfriend he had some business to take out this afternoon. Expected to be tied up for a while. Did he say, did he tell her what type of business? No, she hasn't got any idea. That's why I'm here actually. We'll check with everybody who knows the kid. Oh, you know, Lieutenant, I don't think Henry and I can be of any help. <clears throat> you didn't get in touch with the husband again? Another pitch about his grade, maybe? I'm sure not. Of 